hello everyone. Hello. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, the relational proofs for quantum programs. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Gilles Butter, uh, Justin Xu, Min Shen Ying, and uh, Nen Kun Yu. Uh, relational verification is a useful technique to understand the program behaviors. Uh, for example, uh, consider two executions of the same program with related inputs. Uh, we may use it to reason about uh, the non-interference in information flow system and uh, the robustness of a single program. And uh, in the probabilistic setting, uh, we may use it to uh, verify the uniformity of a, a randomized program and uh, the approximately equivalence between two programs. Uh, in application, uh, relational verification has found a success in many fields, uh, including cryptography, machine learning, differential privacy, and so on. Meanwhile, uh, in the last two decades, uh, verification of quantum programs has become a re uh, an active research area, uh, not only because of the potential of quantum computing, uh, but also the richer nature of the quantum world. Uh, however, most of the work uh, focus on the uh, focus on proving properties of uh, a single program, or oh, sorry, um, single single program execution, and uh, a few works uh, focus on the equivalence of uh, programs uh, using by simulation and uh, uh, symbolic methods. Uh, so, is it possible to develop uh, logic to reason about uh, general relational properties of quantum programs. Uh, of course, there are many potential applications, uh, uh, such as verification of quantum crypto, uh, cryptography, uh, correctness of quantum compilers, and uh, written about quantum differential privacy. Uh, in this work, we develop a quantitative relational quantum program logic called RQBD, and uh, in detail, uh, we use quantum coupling, an analog of probabilistic coupling, uh, to interpret the judgment, uh, as it can capture the in, uh, properties of interest. Uh, we also define a set of useful inference rules, uh, including the basic construct specific rules and uh, synchronous rules uh, with measurement conditions. I will explain this later. And uh, to show the effectiveness, we use our logic to uh, verify several non-trivial examples, uh, including the uniformity of quantum binary factory, the reliability of quantum teleportation against noise, uh, the security of quantum one-time pad, and uh, the equivalence of quantum works uh, with different coins. Uh, before going into details, uh, let me reveal the quantum mechanics. Uh, I hope to give you some intuition about the quantum world. Uh, the first one is about the state. Uh, unlike a classical state, a quantum state can be a superposition state. Uh, for example, uh, uh, if we use zero to denote a demon and one for angel, uh, then the quantum state in this box uh, can, uh, can be a demon and an angel at the same time, uh, which may be described by this state. Uh, next uh, is about evolution. The evolution of an isolated quantum system is described by the unitary transformation, and for an open system, uh, which may interact with the environment, uh, we use quantum operation to describe it. The third one is about quantum measurement, uh, which is essentially different from the classical measurement, uh, because it will change the state. Uh, for example, uh, if we open the box here, uh, and we get the classical information, we know it's a demon or an angel with a certain probability, uh, but at the same time, uh, the quantum state claps, uh, claps to the demon or angel. Uh, generally, quantum measurements are used to extract information, uh, classical information from a quantum state. Uh, finally, uh, 
the composite system is described by the tensor product of all subsystems. Uh, for syntax, we use a high-level programming language, uh, the so-called quantum while language, uh, which is uh, quite similar to the classical while language. Uh, it consists of skip, uh, sequential composition, initialization, unitary transformation, if and while statement. Uh, note that uh, the classical assignment uh, is now replaced by the initialization and the unitary transformation. Uh, in if statement, the guard is a quantum measurement. In detail, we first apply the quantum measurement and then execute the subprogram sub SM according to the quantum, quantum uh, outcome of the quantum measurement M. And uh, similar for the while statement, if the outcome is zero, then we terminate, and if it's one, we execute the subprogram S and then the while again. Uh, it knows uh, it's worth noting that uh, the quantum measurement will change the state. So we need to pay more attention to the if and the while statement. Uh, for any quantum while program S, uh, its semantic function is the mapping from quantum state to quantum state. Uh, intuitively speaking, uh, given quantum state, uh, given input quantum state rho, uh, the S rho stands for the output state. Uh, after executing the program S. Uh, coupling is a powerful technique in relational verification uh, as uh, it can be used to capture the relational uh, properties between two distributions. Uh, mathematically, uh, our cup, uh, our coupling is, uh, our coupling mu uh, is, uh, is a coupling the distribution mu is a coupling for mu1 and mu2 if it's marginal, mu a and mu b over a and b uh, equal to mu1 and mu2 respectively. And uh, quantum coupling is an analog of probabilistic coupling. Yeah. Uh, suppose we have a quantum state rho over the composite system a, b, and uh, we use rho a and rho b to denote the reduced density matrix, uh, which describes the state uh, over the subsystems. Uh, we say rho is a coupling for rho 1 and rho 2 uh, if it's marginal rho a and rho b equals to rho 1 and rho 2. Uh, note that uh, a quantum coupling uh, might be an entangled state, uh, which is a peculiar phenomenon in quantum world. Uh, of course, such a quantum coupling can also capture the relationship between two quantum states. Uh, next is about predicate. Uh, proposed by Berkhoff and von Neumann in 1936, uh, projection or closed subspace, subspace uh, is an important kind of predicate in quantum logic. Uh, projections are useful and simple when written about the pure state, but for mixed state, it's not so impressive. Uh, so there's another choice of predicate, uh, the quantum effect or observable, uh, which was proposed by Daunt and uh, Planning Garden in 2006. Uh, for an effect A, okay, there, is a, uh, there exists a corresponding measurement MA, and uh, for some quantum state rho, if we perform MA, then the expected classical information uh, we can obtain is uh, trace A rho. Therefore, we may regard uh, the expectation trace A rho as the truth value of rho with respect to the effect A. Uh, that is, uh, the expectation trace A rho characterizes how the quantum state rho satisfies the effect A. Uh, unlike the Boolean logic here, uh, we need to regard it as a many-valued logic. Uh, the advantage of effect is that it can be used to uh, quantitatively reason about a quantum program. Uh, not only for pure state, but also well for mixed state. Uh, the judgment in our logic is a form like this, uh, with a set condition gamma in the left, and the two programs as one as two we want to compare in the middle, and the precondition A and the post condition B. The validity is defined in such a way. Uh, First, we have a 
we have the left program as one with input row one and output as one row one. And then the right program as two with input row two and the output as two row two. Uh, now we related them together by finding the quantum coupling row uh, for two input states, row one, row two, and the quantum coupling sigma uh, for two output states. And the given precondition A and the postcondition B. Uh, recall that in many valued logic, the implication is uh, like this. Uh, if a proposition P implies proposition Q, uh, if, and, uh, if the truth value of P is less equal than truth value of, P, of Q. Uh, similarly, uh, we need to ensure that the truth value of P uh, with respect to the A, uh, which is characterized by chase A row, uh, should uh, smaller or equal than the truth value of, uh, of sigma with respect to B. Uh, also, we need a universal quantifier before rho and the sigma. OK, once the interpretation is fixed, the next challenge is to define a set of useful proof rows. Uh, the first consist consideration is to regard, uh, to relate two programs in a tensor program manner. Uh, OK, sorry. Uh, see this figure. Uh, we have a coupling row with marginal row one and row two. And if we apply the tensor program as one tensor two directly on row, and then we get the output as one tensor two row, it can be proved that uh, this state is uh, a coupling for S1 row one and S2 row two. So uh, it's possible to establish rules uh, directly according to the quantum hall logic, uh, which was first proposed by Minshin in 2011. Uh, for a formula uh, uh, of the tensor product program S1 tensor S2 with precondition A and uh, post condition B, uh, if it's valid, uh, in QHL, then uh, this judgment is also valid in our logic. Uh, there are a set of sound and complete rules in, uh, for quantum Hall logic, and uh, we can extend them directly as our basic construct specific rules here. OK, uh, there's rules for if statement and uh, while statement. However, it can be shown that there are some examples that the rule if and the loop are too weak to reason the desired uh, relational properties. The key issue uh, is that uh, there is no synchronization for control flow if we relate two programs in a tensor program man manner. Uh, for example, if we compare uh, two if statements, uh, we need to compare all the branches that 0, T0, S1, T1, and also S0, T1, and S1, T0. Uh, consider the subprograms labeled by blue color here, the X gate and the H gate. Obviously, the sub subprogram S0 is the same as T0 and S1, the same as T1. But uh, so these two comparisons are strong. Uh, however, uh, for the cross comparison between S0, T1, and S1, T0, uh, the X gate and the H gate are quite different. So these two comparisons are weak. And this will significantly weaken the whole if rule. Uh, for example, here, the equivalence between these two if statements may be lost if we use the if rule. So how to capture the manner of control flow? Uh, to address this, we introduce uh, the measurement condition in this form. OK, I won't go into detail uh, due to the limit of time, but uh, this formula indeed works. Uh, with this, with this uh, measurement condition, we're able to establish this if rule. Uh, it says that uh, if, the, if two input row one and row two uh, produce the same uh, control flow, then we can compare these two if statements in a uh, lock step manner. That is, we only need to compare uh, the corresponding branches as 0, T0, and S1, T1, uh, while all the cross comparisons, such as S0, T1, and S1, T0, uh, cannot, uh, 
can be omitted. Uh, okay, uh, let me show how, how logic can be used to verify robustness of quantum temptations. Uh, here is uh, the circuit model of quantum temptation. Uh, before the teleportation, Alice and Bob share an EPR state, uh, which is labeled by blue color here, the phi AB. And now Alice wants to send the unknown qubit psi to Bob. And uh, she first uh, applies the signal gate and H gate. And then she measures these two circuits and uh, send the result, the two bit classical information to Bob. Uh, note that after the measurement, uh, the state collapsed, so uh, the unknown state uh, disappeared here. On the other hand, after receiving two bit classical information, Bob applied the corresponding unit transformations, and uh, surprisingly, the unknown state is recovered at the end. Uh, the, cir uh, the circuit in the blue box is used to produce the EPR state. Uh, of course, we can use our quantum well language to uh, to run this program uh, like this. So, what is the robustness test? We uh, we add a quantum noise e after each h gate, and uh, use rho to denote the final state uh, that Bob can recover. So, we aim to prove that. Uh, so we aim to prove that uh, the row is uh, close to the initial state psi. Uh, we can relate them like this, and uh, if the quantum noise is uh, a bit flip channel, that is, the quantum state is unchanged with probability p and with the probability 1 minus p, uh, the state 0 changed to 1 and 1 changed to 0. And uh, we can use our logic to verify this judgment. Uh, okay, it's somewhat difficult to understand, uh, but it says that the fidelity between rho and the psi are larger or equal than the square root of p. That is, if p is close to zero, the noise is small, then rho satisfies uh, a, a rho close to psi. Okay, let me conclude the talk by some work. There are already some existing work about equivalence and also the most closed uh, work the quantum relational hot logic. Uh, and also there are many future works uh, like uh, how to extend our logic to an approximate version uh, to reason about uh, like quantum differential privacy and something similar. Okay, that's all, thanks. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, we'll take a couple of questions. Thanks very much for your talk. Um, are there correct programs that you can't verify using your system? So, in uh, other words, is your system complete? Can't. Okay. Uh, uh, of course. Uh, uh, for example, some programs that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we use this uh, measurement condition. Uh, this is indeed a very strong. Uh, uh, condition. We need that two programs uh, have the same uh, uh, flow control. However, some programs may, the flow control may be similar, but not the same. Uh, and, if, uh, uh, and if the raw if is uh, still too weak, then such programs we obviously we cannot verify. Okay. One more question. Um, when you say at the said at the end that uh, for this teleportation with noise that you can uh, ver that you can show that the um, that it's uh, approximately equivalent to the teleportation, what exactly was your notion of uh, approximately equivalent there? Uh, 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 I think uh, this formula. It's somewhat difficult to understand, uh, but uh, if uh, you see, for example, for the input uh, psi here, uh, then this, the choose value of this one is p, and uh, for the output, uh, 
uh, the first program is also Poseidon, but the second is Rho. So this one is uh, reduced to trace uh, Poseidon Rho. So uh, this formula tells us the trace Poseidon Rho is larger or equal than P. Uh, uh, we can write it in, a, in, a, in another form like this one, the fidelity. Uh, if we know the defini definition of fidelity, uh, it's equal to the square of tra uh, square root of trace uh, Poseidon Rho. Thank you.